Hi, Sandy McTeer here. Welcome to my studio. I hope you enjoy painting this super simple seascape with me today. One of my favorite places to go to is the beach, to put my feet in the sand, hear the crashing waves, smell the ocean, soak up the sun, and to watch the sunrise and sunset across the horizon is everything. All right, so this is what we're painting, my Seize the Day seascape. Let me show you how easy it is to paint. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I love this surface. This is from cdwood.com. I love the shape of it. And I'm gonna use the DecoArt Media Gesso. I want a little bit of texture in this background. So I'm gonna put out some gesso. And then again, using a palette knife, I'm going to apply this side to side on the surface. And I love when it stutters like that. And you can add as much texture as you'd like. So we're gonna do this all the way down to the bottom, let it completely dry, and then we'll start painting. Okay, so my surface has completely dried. One of my favorite tools in my studio is a heat tool. This one I love, it's a Ranger. It's super quiet, doesn't make a lot of noise, and it dries things much faster than sitting there and watching paint dry. I'm an impatient painter, so I wanna move on to the next step. So, highly recommend that. All right, so the paint I'm using today are the DecoArt Traditions. They're an artist quality acrylic, but you can use Americana or whatever acrylic paint you have. Um, I picked three different blues, my favorite, this aquamarine. I have a phthalo blue, and then a little bit brighter ultramarine blue. And then of course, white. So I'm gonna put a little bit of each of these on my palette. I'm also gonna put a little bit of Hansa Yellow Light. I like a little green in my water. So I'll put some of that on the palette, just a little. And I'm using um, a one inch flat brush. This is um, Black Gold Dynasty brush. I love, love, love. So I'm gonna get that wet, tap it off on a paper towel. And I'm gonna start with the Ultramarine Blue and just start adding that to my surface. Now you see all that gesso in the background giving beautiful texture. Just long strokes. I picked up a little bit of phthalo blue. And then of course I'm gonna pick up a little bit of aquamarine. Back to the ultramarine blue. So I'm just picking it up on my brush, not mixing it down to one color, adding all those colors into my sky. Now I'm gonna pick up just the aquamarine on my brush and start adding that into the water area. A little bit of white. It's just gonna make it a little bit more opaque. And back and forth. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of phthalo blue. And so what happens is you start to get these streaks in the water and it just, I don't know, it just looks a little bit more natural. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white. Come right up in here to my sky and I'm using light pressure, just lightly going back and forth into that blue right down into the water pick up a little bit more of the aquamarine a little bit of white and as i get down here i'm going to add just a touch of water into my brush and just let that kind of start trailing off down into the sand area All 
right, so I'm gonna wash out my brush. All right, so you know I want it a little bit darker here at the horizon line, so I'm gonna pick up a little phthalo blue and add some of that in. I just switched to a three-quarter flat. And again, you can even use your fingers to kind of smooth that out. What's gonna make that horizon line look even darker is by adding a little bit of white to our water. So again, I'm working wet on wet. My blues are all still wet. And I just I love the way that gesso in the background is picking up that texture, giving the piece a little bit of movement. Okay, not too much, just streaks here and there. and get that horizon line as straight as possible. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse out my brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of the aquamarine. And then I'm just gonna get the tiniest touch, tiniest touch of yellow. Just kind of work that in on my palette. And then just here and there. I love that, um, I don't know, it's like, that Jamaican blue and just a little bit of green mixed in. Okay, get too much, simply just pick up a little bit more of the blue color. All right, so I'm gonna leave that for now and rinse out my brush. Now let's move on to the sand. I'm gonna use a little bit of raw sienna. a touch of uh, raw umber, or you could use burnt umber. And a little bit of medium white. Okay, and I still probably have a little bit of blue in my brush and that's quite all right. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the raw sienna, some of the medium white. And let's just start adding that sand right here at the bottom. So I'm gonna go darker first and then we'll lighten it up. Right into that water. Wipe off the brush, pick up a little bit more of the medium white. Now let's pick up just a tiny touch of the raw umber. Pick up a little bit of white with that medium white. There we go. And brighten that up just a little. Okay. Now what I want to do is see the horizon line and then we have the ocean and the sand. So it's looking very uh, separated in three parts. So all I'm going to do is wipe off the brush on the corner, pick up a little bit of the aquamarine, tiny touch of that phthalo blue, touch of white. And holding the brush kind of parallel to my surface, I want to kind of just tap in very haphazardly the water that's coming up onto the sand. So I'm using that corner. This corner is slightly lifted off the surface a little bit more, a little more white. And notice how I've left pockets of that sand showing in between. And then I'm just going to lightly soften it. You can even brush back to give the appearance that that water is going right back into the ocean. A little more white.
And again, just using that corner very lightly, brushing that in. Wipe it off. Soften it just a little bit. Pull some of it back. Very, very light pressure. Just kind of grabbing that white. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Pick up a little bit more white on that corner. And this time in the water, I'm going to do almost like little white caps. Very simple. And then just softly go over them to soften them into that water. doesn't move for you just go back to the blue color pick it up and it will move that white I picked up a little bit of white a little bit of raw sienna and a little bit of that warm white and right down here I'm just gonna add some of these um, waves or white caps that are kind of on this sand I'm just gonna add a little bit of that sand color into those See how that blue's coming out of my brush? Oh, love it when that happens. A little more white. Just soften, soften, soften. And try not to take out all that texture. All right, so I'm gonna leave that. I could play with that all day, but I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white on the corner of my brush, work that in on my palette, and then skim the paper towel just to get rid of some of that excess. But on the corner of my brush, I'm just going to do very small circular motions, very small circular motions, and kind of build the shape of a cloud. A little more white. It's easier to add layers than it is to have a whole big heavy white cloud sitting up here. And what happens is you're picking up some of that blue, some of the blue that was on my brush, some of the brown even that was down here um, in the sand is on my brush. And that's gonna give the cloud a little bit of a grayer look, which when we come back and add another layer of white, see how that cloud just became dimensional? Just soft circular motions. And we don't want it a cloudy day at the beach, so we're just going to brush in a couple of clouds and softening the bottom, very soft pressure. Get a little bit more white. Maybe this one comes right off the surface here. Oh, but I love that gesso is picking up that paint and just creating more texture. Wipe off my brush, a little more white. And this is again how you can make it dimensional. So instead of starting right back here, I'm gonna start right here. And now that brighter white against that gray is gonna make it look like your cloud has dimension and shape. Wipe off. And then down here, just kind of give it a little bit of a wisp on the Lower clouds, nothing defined or exact, but just a little bit of white down here. And then again, let's go back and soften this out just a little on the bottom. So you can almost hear that scrubbing of my brush. I have very little to no paint on it, but it is still picking up some of that color. Let's go right down into that water, down into our sand. All right, so I want to soften the um, the look right here on the sky. Just a little bit of white on my brush, and I do have a, I guess, a little bit of that aqua color in there too, which is fine. 
just to tone that down just a little. Okay. We'll add a little bit more of the white down here in the sand. Try not to overwork it. A little more movement in our water. And that will show up even better if I come back and pick up a little bit of the dark color and put it right up underneath that white. And just brush it into the water. Just tiny little white caps. Again, just to give that water movement. All right, so I'm gonna to switch to a smaller brush. This is a number 12, again, a black gold by Dynasty. Rinse that out. Pick up a little bit of white on the corner. Just have a little bit more control using this smaller brush. And I'm gonna come back up here to my cloud. And again, using that very soft circular motion, I'm gonna build up a little bit of white on my clouds. Again, remember, this is decorative painting. You can make it what you want. You wanna add purple to your sky, add some purple. You wanna add a little pink and have that cotton candy. Sky, add a little bit of pink. And again, you wanna leave those pockets of gray in between so that it's not all white. And again, just on that corner, Soft circular motion. And then on the edges, I like just to soften that a little underneath. You can soften it with your finger or you can soften it with the brush. Okay, add a little bit more white to this cloud. Again, just on that corner, soft circular motion. All right. All right, let's move on to the palm tree. So I'm gonna take two greens. This is pine green. And sap green. So the pine green's a little bit brighter. The sap green's your darkest green. We're going to use the um, raw sienna, the raw umber, a little bit of yellow, and let's build this palm tree. So I'm going to pick up the raw umber first. And again, I'm just using that number 12. And I want my palm tree to kind of come at an angle because I'm gonna have a stencil down here. So I'm going to give myself some placement. And I want that palm tree to come up to about there. So it's easier if you give yourself some placement like that. Then I'm going to load that back up with some raw umber, a little bit of raw sienna on the corner, and I'm just gonna tap that on my brush. Okay, so now what I wanna do is at an angle, I'm going to just tap in this trunk. And then as I get towards the top, I'm tapering off so that it's not as wide. So that raw umber is at the bottom, raw sienna is at the top, and I'm just tapping in that color just to give that tree a little bit of texture, just like that. Now I lost my raw umber down here, so I'm just gonna pick up a little bit more, but I like it um, jagged and not even because again, that just lends itself to the shape of that tree. And I like texture. All right, so I'm gonna pick up a little raw sienna, a little bit of the medium white, and just along the top, little taps. Pick up a little more. So it's gonna make it darker down here, brighter on this side. And just like that. All right, wipe off the brush. Gonna pick up some sap green on both sides. 
And from here, you want to think of um, like a mustache. So I'm going to slide on the chisel edge and paint two lines going down for the palm fronds. Then I know I want one going up, another one in between, slide. I want this one to kind of go towards the trunk. in between and then again have that one a little bit lower going towards the trunk and sometimes I'll even do one that goes right on the trunk so now I'm going to load that brush with the sap green but I'm going to swipe it across my paper towel and what we're going to do is we're going to slide on the line and pull slide and pull slide and pull very light pressure and so as I'm stopping, I'm lifting that brush so that you get that feather, uh, the paint is feathering through the bristles instead of just stopping. If I stop, I'm gonna have a stop line. So I wanna pull and lift. Another thing that's making that happen is that I don't have too much paint on my brush. If I had too much paint on my brush, it would just be solid. Okay, so I wanna go up and over that line that we painted just a little bit so slide and i'm pulling and lifting and they're longer at the tip coming to a nice little point again just make it a little bit fuller come over that line Slide and pull. Very little pressure, very little paint. And that's picking up a little bit of white from that cloud that's still wet, which is totally fine. All right, so that's our sap green. I'm gonna wipe off the brush. So now I wanna pick up the pine green, a touch of Hansa yellow light, mix that on the palette, pick up a touch, tiny touch of white, mix that in. It's gonna give us like a candy apple green color. Touch more white to brighten it. All right, I'm just gonna swipe it across my paper towel doing the same technique, sliding on the trunk, and I'm gonna pull down. And what I am trying not to do is I don't wanna cover up all the dark color. I'm just adding a second layer, brighter palm fronds, leaving that dark is gonna give the palm fronds that dimension. Okay, you can slide on that trunk. Very little paint on my brush. Slide and pull. A little more pine green, some Hansa yellow light, a little white. Swipe it across the paper towel. Brighten those palm fronds. I especially like it when it's a little brighter towards that tip. It's like the sun's just kissing it. All right, so now I'm gonna add a little more yellow to my brush. I didn't wipe it out or anything. I still have that mixture in, but a little more yellow and a little more white. Mix that somewhere, and that's gonna give you a much brighter green. Swipe across your paper towel, and just in places, again, where you want the sun to kind of kiss those palm fronds, Add a little bit of that color in. Try not to cover up all the dark. I'm gonna add a little bit of the aquamarine to this mixture. 
that will just kind of tie in some of that aquamarine in the background. Little touch of white. Swipe it across the paper towel and I'm gonna add very little of this color, but I do wanna add it into the palm fronds. Just brightens that look. Again, just a couple of strokes here and there, but not everywhere. I'm even gonna add a little bit of that to the trunk. Just right along that brighter side of the trunk. And notice how I'm just using the chisel edge to make it a little choppy, give it a little more texture. Wipe off my brush. A little bit of raw sienna and some white. I'm gonna mix that on my palette. Swipe it across the paper towel. And just brighten that a little bit more. Again, just kind of tap it with a chisel edge, give it a little bit of texture. Use your finger to soften it out. One of the best painting tools you have. Add a little bit more of the raw umber. I'm just gonna stand it up on the chisel edge and clean up this edge just a little bit on this darker side of my palm tree. Still want some texture. Just don't want it to look like my brush frayed too much. Okay, I'm kind of feeling like it needs a little cloud right here, just a very tiny one. So a little white on my brush, again, soft circular motion. Wipe off, pick up a little more white. Kind of brighten it here and there. Wipe off and then just kind of soften that bottom of that cloud. And that has some of that raw sienna in it. I love that. I love when that happens. A little more white to brighten it up. Okay, so I'm going to pick up a little white and just add a little bit of white caps over here. Not too many. You can rub it out with your finger if you get too many. And so I'm just kind of skimming the flat of my brush very, very lightly, and I have very little paint. So again, it's just gonna give the water some movement. All right, a little more white on my brush. And here I do want to pick up a little bit heavier white. And so again, on that corner, my corner here is lifted slightly. This corner is touching and I'm giving it a little bit of a shimmy. A little bit of a shimmy and shake to get that to come off the brush and leave a little more texture on the sand. Pick up a little bit of white, a little bit of aquamarine. And I wanna add a little bit down here, make it look like the water has just kind of flowed right onto that sand a little more, but lighter. Okay, so right under the uh, white caps on the sand, I can add just a little bit of raw umber and a little bit of raw sienna. And I'm just gonna put a little touch of that underneath some of these waves. I'm just gonna lift those just a little. Pick 
up a little bit of white. And just soften that out if you get too much. All right, so I, I think I want to add a little bit more white to this cloud right here and brighten it up. Skip a little space. Soft circular motions. There we go. Just had a little too much of the raw sienna in it from my brush. And I'm going to pick up a little touch of the aquamarine, a little touch of white. And just kind of skim that brighter side. Just add a brighter highlight. Sometimes when the paint is wet on wet, it just soak into each other. So that's what that color did. And I do want to see a little bit of that. Just kind of soften it out with your fingers. And then a little bit more of that aquamarine blue and white. Skim your paper towel. And add a little bit brighter highlight to some of these palm fronds. Not too much. Just here and there. Okay, so I do wanna add a little bit more brown underneath some of these white caps. I know we added it earlier and you probably have noticed I'm jumping around in this painting. You know, I work on something, then I move somewhere else. Work on something and move somewhere else. I do that to, um, to help myself not stay in one area, especially if it's aggravating me. If the clouds are aggravating me, I need to move on to something else because I'm just going to sit there and overwork them and make it worse. So I tend to just move on. Tweak as I need to, add more as I feel it needs. Like there, we'll just add a little more white. And at the end of the day, it's just paint and it's supposed to be fun. All right, so I think we're done. What I typically do at the end is I'll go and reevaluate, do I need to add more white to my clouds, a little more movement into my water, a little bit of shading underneath the water that's coming up onto the sand, just to kind of make sure that your lights and darks, you know, are giving things shape and movement. Um, I'm pretty pleased with where this has gone, so I'm gonna go on to the next step, and that is to use this um, M2 Seize the Day. This is a stencil line I have with Tracy Moreau. And I'm, I'm not sure that I want to use the sand dollar as much as I absolutely love it. I just think it would kind of overwhelm. So I'm going to just do the words. And if you don't have a stencil you want to use, you can always print the words off on your computer and then transfer it with transfer paper and then paint them in. So I'm using, um, this is a Dynasty Stencil Pro. I loaded it with white, swirl it around on your palette, and then you wanna take almost all the paint off on your paper towel. And I'm gonna line this up, try and get it as straight as possible. And then using a soft circular motion, a little too much paint on there, soft circular motion, I'm going to go over the words. All right, and then we'll lift that up. Oh yeah, I like that. Okay, if I want to make it darker, so notice I like that the way it is, but if I wanted to make it even brighter, I can let this completely dry and then stencil over it again. But I'm pleased with that. So now I want to put C's right above it and just try and get that as straight as possible and centered. And notice I didn't load any more paint. I have enough paint to come up and do this. Oh yeah, nice. So you'll notice the sand's a little bit wet. I stenciled on part of the sand dollar and it's just a little too big for this piece. If this was like a third the size, 
it would look cute, but I'm just gonna, um, I just brushed that out. So if you don't like the look of a stencil, meaning all those little breaks and bridges, you can use a liner brush. This is just um, a number zero round. And I'd load up some white with a lot of water in my brush. And then again, just kind of skim that across the paper towel. You can come in and fill in these gaps. Then it's gonna look like you hand lettered it instead of stenciled it. Again, that's why I'm wiping my brush across my paper towel so that it's not too bright. We want it to match the lettering. just like that and then one final step i love to add splatter so i'm going to get my uh, number 12 brush wet tap it into white make it very inky and then i'm going to use the handle of another brush and i'm going to the middle of this brush to the middle of this brush and i'm just going to add in a little bit of splatter not everywhere and then if i don't like where it is all i have to do is take my finger and wipe it out Then I'm gonna rinse out my brush, add a little bit of brown, make it inky, and again, right down here in the sand, a little bit of brown splatter. Another thing you can do is you can lay a paper towel down so then you know it's not gonna go where you don't want it. And I do want a little bit heavier brown down here, so that's gonna keep it from getting into my water. Rinse out my brush, pick up a little bit of that medium white, which is almost like um, it's like a tan color. Splatter some of that on. Need a little more water. You want an ink like consistency. And I'm just gonna tap that in place. Again, just gives you know a little softness. Again, adds to that decorative painting piece. Now I'm just gonna take the paper towel and lay it down and lightly touch it. And what that's gonna do is it's going to stain. So that you're gonna have more of a, a splattered stain instead of a really heavy dot of paint. So I love the way that looks. All right, y'all, I think we're done. I hope you enjoy painting my Seize the Day project. Make sure to check out my website at sandymcteardesigns.com for pattern packets, Zoom classes, and more.